Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson, you're watching Reality Survival. So today we're going to talk about how to put together an active shooter response trauma kit. Um, you know, we just had another school shooting today, uh, and uh, you know, it's even though overall violence is trending down, there are still, you know, a number of instances of mass shooters, active shooters, and things like that. So I think having a kit like this to put in your vehicle uh, so that you could be able to respond if need be, you know, then I think that's a good idea. So we're going to use the uh, Battle Box Mission 36 as an opportunity to show how I packed up this kit and all the things that came in the box, kind of killing two birds at one stone. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's not... Um, out of the realm of possibility that you could show up to, you know, pick your kid up from school or go to a concert or, you know, maybe a Friday night football game or something like that. And there could be some sort of act of major violence. And that's why I think it's important to have something like this in a vehicle. Um, I've had a variety of different kits in my vehicles over the years. And this is the one that I'm going to be putting uh, into my personal truck as well. So with that, I will give you a quick look at what comes in this month's battle box. You can see that, hopefully. And then we'll just go ahead and go through this bag because uh, it pretty much has everything in it that came in the bag with the one exception that's not in it right now is this uh, litter. And let's see, the litter came with um, the advanced box and it is essentially just very similar to the North American Rescue Litter that I showed you guys not long ago. And this one is made by, I'm not sure, doesn't say. But anyway, it's basically a, an emergency litter that has uh, handles and straps, you know, built into it. I think they say it's capable of holding like 400 pounds or something like that. So that is a part of it. Uh, everything else uh, is in the bag here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just go through the bag. So on the side here we have, um, this is a gloves pouch and this was sent with the battle box. It's got some orange uh, nitrile gloves in it and then this kit it's made so that you can just stuff the gloves down in here and you can pull them out one by one if you want. But uh, since it's going to keep the gloves a little bit cleaner I'm just going to keep them in the package for now, you know, for me. In this pocket, I just placed, uh, I went to the dollar store and I bought $10 worth of items at, a dollar, at the dollar store. And this was one of them. It's just a dollar for uh, a bottle of alcohol. It's 50% isopropyl alcohol. And this is just good for, you know, being able to splash in wounds and stuff like that, you know, just before you go ahead and, and bandage it up and stuff. Um, not absolutely necessary in a trauma triage kind of kind of situation, but since it's so easy and I had a pocket that it worked in, I figured it would be good to go. Um, with this, I only spent uh, forty-two dollars in total. I spent ten dollars at a dollar store, and I spent thirty-two dollars at the Walmart pharmacy, um, getting some additional bandages and gauze and all that kind of stuff. And you guys will see that in here. So really, you know, with the kit. And then I added, uh, you know, one personal flashlight and forty-two dollars worth of stuff, and I've got a kit that's pretty much packed up and ready to go. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so the next pocket we'll do uh, just right here on top. I just took a little uh, Olight Mini, what is it, the S1 baton, and the reason I put this one on here is because it's small, it's lightweight, and uh, it puts a, a good wide beam out there. And you can also clip it onto a hat so you can, you know, work with your hands. And then it's also got the hand lanyard that I can use. I can just slide it on my hand and let it fall so I don't lose it. And then if I need it, grab it real quick. So it's kind of a good, good little light for, uh, you know, doing first aid kind of things as well. Okay, the next items <clears throat> that are on here is, these are pretty cool little Velcro patches. It says, I don't know if you can see it, it says B positive. That's my blood type. And they actually gave you a whole package full of them with all the different blood types in the battle box this, this month. So that was kind of neat. All right, so the top, uh, we've got a handle 
on here and that kind of folds over and then for the top pouch what I did is I kind of put the minor things in here the the minor kind of treatment stuff I've got like 50 alcohol prep pads I got a hundred of those at the dollar store you know for one dollar basically and I put like half of them in here then we have the triage lights and these came with the uh, with the battle box and what this is is these you can click them on and they'll shine a different color red yellow blue and green and the idea is is that you can you can you can peel off the adhesive off the back and place these on victims so that first responders will kind of know what condition they're in if they're blue they're dead if they're green they're good if they're yellow you know sort of intermediate or in the middle and if they're red they're critical they need help right then so I think that's pretty cool there's like uh, three or four of those here in the package that came with it the next thing is this this came with the bag that came in it with the the bag was with the pro box and um, these are just a number of different arm bands almost like the bands that you would um, put on your wrist if you were going to a concert or whatever but you know they just do the colors and they kind of show the gray for it, you're expecting them to die um, deceased spelled out on there on, on the gray ones there and then what other colors do we got green for minor yellow for delayed meaning you can delay the treatment and red for immediate so it's got a whole bunch of these things in here so that's actually pretty cool because you would be able to triage a pretty good number of people and then somebody doesn't have to go back through and redo the efforts or whatever okay so that was in the top there as well um, then I just put some these I got at the Walmart these are just some four by four um, bandages and that's the smallest bandage that I have in there and I, I don't put any band-aids or anything like that because I don't want that taking up room or anything like that that's that's probably the smallest uh, injury that I'm going to be worried about in a trauma situation where you're trying to do as much as possible as quick as possible so those are the, the smallest kind of first aid item you know that, that's going to be in there okay so that's all that's in that part in that pocket and again this bag's pretty cool it's a battle tack bag it's got these little paracord you know zippy things on here it seems to work pretty well uh, okay, let's go ahead and go over to this pocket over here, side pocket. And in this side pocket, I think I've got 12, uh, I've got two bags of five and six, yeah, 11 I think, because I got one out here, of these uh, five by nine trauma pads. And these are going to be a pretty big use. You can fold these over if you need to, you know, and they're going to be really good for putting pressure bandages on and stuff like that. You slap that on the wound take some you know gauze to hold it in place or take some tape and just tape it down on place you know whatever whatever you need to do um, but these are going to be pretty big items when it comes to major trauma type wounds where you have a lot of bleeding and all that kind of stuff so you definitely want some of these and I'm just putting these uh, I've got pretty much everything in here with the exception of the tape inside of some Ziploc bags with the easy to open tabs and the idea behind that being that you can get it open quick and easy with your gloves on and all that kind of stuff and it being no big deal but it's keeping them clean it's keeping them from getting wet and all that kind of stuff so that I wanted that gauze right there because that's going to be one of the first things that you're going to you know need to grab if you're treating somebody is, is you know being able to get that gauze in place as quickly as possible so that there's no you know to, to kind of control the bleeding as soon as you can okay so we got that side we got that side let's look at the front and the front pocket here this is the knife of the month comes with the uh, with the pro plus and it is a fox knives knife it's got a really cool kind of quick detach um, 
almost like Kydex holster on it, and the it's got like a Molly stick sort of on the back, so you can kind of mount it real quick and easily. So I think that's kind of neat. Um, Fox knives made in Italy. This is a really cool first responder type knife. It has, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but it's got a little window breaker on there and just on the end. And then on each side of the blade that where it kind of acts as the flipper, it has a uh, straight head screwdriver and then a Phillips head screwdriver. And of course you got the thumb stud on there. You got a bottle opener on the back. Not sure why you need that <laughs> in an emergency situation, but you never know. Might need to crack open a beer. Um, it's got a nice pocket clip, you know, nice deep pocket clip on here. It's a or bright orange color. It also has these kind of textured uh, spots on here so that if your hands have blood on them and stuff, you're not going to slip. And it is really, really sharp. It's a stainless steel blade. It's called the ERT. Um, it's the FX213. FX213 SS stainless steel. So I'm not sure if that's the model or if that's the, the type of uh, steel, but anyhow, um, it does have a little ERT logo on the side of it, and it's just, just a really cool knife. The only downside I'd say to this knife that I can feel right away is, is that right there where your finger kind of goes, the Phillips head screwdriver is sticking up, so it's a little bit uncomfortable, but other than that, it's a liner lock knife. You know, it engages fully and everything. And like I said, it's just super, super sharp. But kind of a cool deal. All right, so slap that back in there. Then it also, uh, this month's kit also comes with a set of shears, and I believe those are in the, the basic box. And the tourniquet pouch that comes with it is kind of made to hold the shears right there. And so that's kind of a cool deal. These shears are just your basic, you know, EMT trauma shears. They got a little bit of serration on there, and uh, these are offered by BattleTac as well. So, just putting that in through there, and then I just kind of take that, loop that around, and that keeps them from falling out. Now, here's the tourniquet kit uh, or the tourniquet pouch. Uh, I went ahead and installed a uh, North American Rescue. Uh, tourniquet in here that was one of my own personal ones that I had just laying around um, you could put in whatever brand you know you wanted to soft tea or whatever they're probably all gonna fit pretty well um, but went ahead and stuck that one in there got that right on the outside so it's quick to get to alright so now we'll go ahead and look on this side pocket put quite a few things in here I've got some a um, uh, couple of rolls of this kind of Curlex kind of sticky tape stuff. What do they call it? I think it's called, uh, I don't know, Power Flex or something like that. But anyway, I put two rolls of that in there. And that's usually just used to kind of hold your gauze or your, your bandage or whatever in place if you need to. Um, then I've also got three rolls of athletic tape. And uh, this is the cloth kind of athletic tape. I got this from Dollar Store. And this is just great stuff to have. You can actually improvise a tourniquet out of this if you had to. You know, if you say you had an injury on the arm, you could basically take a couple of good wraps around, kind of create a good wide swath, and then start tightening it down turn after turn, you know, to create a tourniquet. Not a preferred option, but if you didn't, if you'd already used up the one you had, you didn't have anything else, then it is possible to do that with these. You just want to make sure that you keep it really wide and then successively get tighter and tighter on a real wide strip. So, so I've got three rolls of that in there, and then I've also got uh, some two by twos. These are just uh, some Curad two by two gauze pads. Uh, again, for stuffing, you know, if you needed to into a wound or, or just, you know, topical application on a wound, whatever. Um, and these were from the dollar store as well. They were a dollar for a box of 10. I got three boxes. So I put that in there. Slide that back in. Oh, and on the, uh, on the tape, um, one thing that I recommend you do is just kind of um, put a little tab on there 
just fold over about an inch uh, on the tape and that way it's easy to grab you know you don't have to fumble with trying to get it you know find the end and all that kind of stuff so it kind of just makes it a little bit quicker to be able to do that all right that is all in there clearly if you had the money you know you could, you could uh, and you wanted to really trick it out you could put several uh israeli bandages and and quick clot and you know all those kinds of things you could put that much money into it i didn't really want to put a whole lot of money into it um and that's why i just went with some basic gauze and stuff like that because that really um you know direct pressure elevation and uh, is gonna is gonna stop about 90 percent of uh bleeding i had one of the little pull ties pull off here i think i got it stuck yeah i got it stuck when i put it in um so, you know, that's the direct pressure and elevation is going to stop pretty much um, all bleeding and all that kind of stuff. So, you, you're going to be able to stop the majority of situations with what we've got in this pack. Or you're going to be able to treat the majority of situations. Where did I put them? Oh, I got to put that back in. Anyway, um, okay, so I, I put, I got two, got these at the dollar store. I got two of these elastic bandages. The reason I did that is because with gunshot wounds and stuff like that, it's actually pretty common to get broken bones. So you could have a broken arm if you got shot or, you know, in a femur or, femur or radial ulna or whatever in the arm somewhere. If you needed to immobilize that, these kind of work pretty good for that. So those are in the top there. This is the uh, uh, North American Rescue, what was it called? Six inch trauma dressing, very similar to like an Israeli bandage, that kind of thing. And this came in with the basic box as well. So that is, uh, that's a good item to have in there. And then I went ahead and I got, uh, what do I got? 25 or 50, I can't remember how many in the box. Uh, some four by four um, gauze sponges. And again, those are just good for packing on top of each other when you got a lot of bleeding and then wrapping that up and making a, you know, like a pressure bandage out of it. And then, in the bottom here, um, well, let me hold on a second. I'll pull these out first. So then we got this. Also came with the uh, with the kit. This came with the advanced box, and it's a set of Halo uh, chest seals. These are the non-vented type, and there's two of them in there. So basically, your front and back. If you had like a shoot through on a lung or something, um, but you can also with this package. This package is made in such a way that you could also make an improvised occlusive dressing with this. Just tape off, uh, the, you know, like three sides, and that would allow uh, it to vent out of that third side if you need to. That, that was, that's how we used to teach it in Sears school. I'm not sure if they still teach that, but anyway, here, let me pull these out so you guys can see them if you haven't seen them before. Basically, all they are is a uh, is a clear, you know, kind of, of bandage that has a tab on the side so that you can pull it up and reseal it for venting it if you need to uh, relieve pressure and that kind of thing. So, pretty cool, but these these are kind of expensive. Um, what do they say they cost? I think they've got them at $16, $17, so pretty high. Okay, and then uh, down inside of here, I've got one, two, three, four, and five big rolls of four inch gauze. Uh, this is just Johnson & Johnson stuff from Walmart. Um, you know, not real expensive. I think it was eight fifty for the five rolls or something. So, put all those in there. And then I also got five more rolls of uh, three-inch gauze. Just a small, little bit smaller. And I want to say these were only five forty-seven or something like that. I don't, I don't remember exactly. So, we've got ten big rolls of gauze. And that's actually really important a lot of first aid kits really fall short on gauze and gauze rolls and you know stuff like that to be able to actually pack these wounds and, and dress these wounds appropriately so that's why i kind of got a lot of stuff you know in there in that regard okay the next thing that i've got in here is uh these are just these came with the bag itself and uh, these are just um, cards 
for basically, what do you call them? I forget the name of it. Um, yeah, the TCCC cards, the, the Tactical Combat Casualty Care card. And so it's just got a lot of stuff on here that you can write all that down if you need to. Um, you're, you know, in a real situation, you're probably not going to use these until you've gone through and treated all the life-threatening wounds, tri triaged, you know, everything major, and then you're going back to do this. Now, it, in our situation as civilians and stuff, you're probably going to have first responders on the scene before you start filling these out, but you never know. Um, you might decide to take time and do it as you go. But anyway, uh, it can, comes with a little Sharpie kind of pen uh, to write on and then a couple of rolls of tape to be able to stick it down, you know, onto the person or whatever so it doesn't get lost or used for medical purposes too. Okay, and I think that is all. Let me show you a little bit about the bag here. Um, the bag was... Like I said, it's a Battletech bag, and it came with the, yeah, the, the Pro Box, and it was listed as $64.95. Um, that seems a little bit high to me, but it's a pretty cool bag. So let me show you. So we've got uh, the main compartment here, and it's got you know some pouches and stuff like that inside of it kind of a zipper up here a couple of side pouches it's got a water drain hole in the bottom and then on the back side so that's the handle that clips up to the top on the back side it's also got a belt or cummerbund that you can pull out and you know wear around your waist and then put the uh, you want to put the top over your your head you know, kind of a situation like this. That way, you would have everything you need right here as you're treating people. Now, I don't know if that would end up getting in the way or not. To me, it feels like it might a little bit, but it's just another option. So you could carry it over your shoulder. You know, with this strap, you could put it on like a fanny pack if you really wanted to be one of the cool kids. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of options with this bag, and it's actually it's it seems to be built pretty well. It's it's a heavy duty you know kind of tactical nylon and I mean it's it's pretty cool pretty cool little setup so overall I think this is a this is another good month with BattleBox and if nothing else if you are subscribed to the box hopefully it will prompt you to go ahead and put something like this together because like I said having this kind of stuff in your car uh, is a really good option for really bad situations, you know, and um, it could definitely end up saving you or one of your loved ones or something along those lines. And it gives you a lot of options as far as treatment and things that you can do. You know, maybe you just come up on a car crash, you know, or something like that. This kind of stuff is the kind of stuff that you would want to have in that kind of case too. In a lot of instances, you know, just um, being able to treat big lacerations, cuts, you know, stuff like that. So. Anyway, guys, I would love to know if I left anything out. If you can think of anything that you would pack in here, um, you know, that wasn't on here, then, you know, stick that down in the comments below because it's very possible that I could overlook something because I just kind of did this on the spur of the moment today. I was going through and um, said, hey, I'm going to go ahead and go out and get this packed up. So uh, if you see anything major, stick that in the comments below. I definitely appreciate it. Guys, I also appreciate it when you share these videos. Uh, that makes a huge difference in how well the video performs and all that kind of stuff. So um, uh, definitely let me know. If you tag me in the video when you share it, I'll be sure to reshare it as well. So if you're looking to get more followers on social media or whatever the case may be, that may help too. So I will also stick some links down to uh, some of these types of products down in the description below where you can get them through Amazon. Thank you very much for those people who are using the Amazon link every month. That really helps because uh, our revenues from YouTube are, they're sad, dude. I mean, they're really, really bad nowadays. So it, it helps a lot and I do appreciate it. Anyway, guys, as always, uh, don't forget to live six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys. Hey everybody, I did find a way to go ahead and put this litter on the side in the sleeve of the pack as well. So I just thought I'd show you that real quick.
Thank you.